In this video, we're going to look at the difference between iodine, iodide, and molecular iodine. So let's just start out with iodine. If you go to the periodic table here, you'll see iodine. Iodine has an atomic number of 53. Since it's neutral, the number of protons, that's the atomic number, equals electrons. So in iodine, we have an equal number of protons and electrons. So the dots around here, those are the electrons. We have 53 of them. Count them. And then in the nucleus, we'd have 53 protons. So this is the iodine atom. It's just written as I. You'll note that in the outer shell here, we have two, four, six, only seven valence electrons. If we had eight, that would be very stable. So we could add another electron here to the iodine atom. Let's do that. And when we do that, it's not iodine. It's called the iodide ion. And it's an ion because now it has a negative charge. We added this extra electron here. When we add an extra electron, we've added an extra negative charge. So for the iodide ion, we'd write that as I minus. And that's a one minus, but we usually just don't write the one. So the big difference between iodide and iodine, it's just that iodide has an extra electron and it fills that outer shell, gives it eight. We call that an octet. You might be asking where this extra electron come from. Let's take a look at that. So we're back to our iodine atom where the number of protons in the nucleus equal the number of electrons. A sodium atom has one electron in its outer shell, one valence electron. We could move that to the iodine. Now the iodine, it has eight, so it's not iodine. It's the iodide ion and it has a negative charge. The sodium, it lost this electron in the outer shell and this whole outer shell is empty, but the shell underneath is full. And since the sodium lost an electron, it lost a negative charge. It'll become one plus positive. So these two would be attracted to each other and they'd form an ionic bond. So the iodide ion could have gotten that electron from another element like sodium, a metal that tends to lose valence electrons. There's one more way we could give that iodine atom a full outer shell. That's to make molecular iodine. So in this case, we have two separate iodine atoms. So instead of transferring an electron, like we did with the sodium and the iodine to form an ionic compound, we can form a covalent compound by sharing. So if we were to overlap these two, and you can see now that we're sharing these two valence electrons here. This is a covalent bond. And when we do that, it's not the iodine atom anymore. We call it molecular iodine. Sometimes this is also called diatomic iodine because we have two atoms. In this case, because they're sharing, we don't have an ionic charge. But if you count the valence electrons, we have two, four, six, and then eight because they're sharing. Over here, we have two, four, six, eight. So by sharing that covalent bond, we complete the octet. The iodine is very stable. We have I2, also called diatomic iodine. So to recap, iodine, an atom of iodine, is just I from the periodic table where the protons in the nucleus equal the number of electrons in the atom. So it's a neutral atom. I minus, that's the iodide ion. The iodide ion, that has this extra electron here to complete the outer shell. It's I minus. Then molecular iodine, that's I2, where we've had these two iodine atoms share. They're sharing this pair of electrons here to complete their outer shells. And we're not concerned about charge because it's a covalent compound. So that's the difference between iodine, iodide, and molecular iodine. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.